Hi, Mystics, Miss Melinda here, your spiritual worker from Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com. Here to talk to you today about using the tarot with shadow work. I have a handful of cards here, and I'd like to discuss what kinds of messages the, these cards can bring you pertaining to your personal shadow work and your personal growth through that shadow work. So if you decide to use your tarot as an extra tool for shadow work or for shadow work meditations, this video can be used to explore the meanings and messages and applications of these cards to your shadow work. The first card that I have here is the Fool card. The Fool card may be telling you that you are trying too hard to control things. You're trying too hard to control your path. You're trying to control things that are out of your control at this time. You've lost touch with your ability to have faith. You've lost touch with your ability to see the world from a place of innocence. You've lost the ability to be surprised by the world, to take chances, to see things with childlike wonder, or perhaps you have lost your connection with your inner child. And I am using the Ghetto Tarot today as a reference. The Nine of Swords is the next card. The Nine of Swords is very much about our mental health, and how our mental health affects our sleep and our rest and our overall physical health. The Nine of Cards may be telling you that your problem lies within your thinking, that perhaps your thinking has become too negative or your neural pathways need some work. In other words, your thinking keeps going back to the same patterns and those patterns need to be changed, adjusted. You need to be exposed to new things in order to do so. The Nine of Swords may be telling you that you need to pay attention to what it is that's keeping you up at night. What are you overanalyzing? What are you worrying about? Where are you spending that mental energy that is bringing you to exhaustion or keeping you awake? There may be a message within what you're thinking about or what you're fixating on that needs some deeper analysis in order to dive into your shadow work. The Nine of Swords is going to be a card that will very much be influenced by the cards that are around it. So there could be a card that comes up in conjunction with the Nine of Swords, which shows you what is weighing on your mind or what is causing you the most anxiety or the most fear or the most over analysis. So pay close attention to the nearby cards. The moon card is the next card. So the moon card may be telling you that you're being paranoid, that you're getting lost in thinking that has no end, ha has no potential for a positive ending, that you're allowing yourself to get lost in thinking that can only lead you deeper into the depths that can only lead you deeper into sadness or depression. The moon card also reminds you not to make too many assumptions about other people or too many assumptions about circumstances outside of yourself, especially things that you can't control. The moon card says that now is the time to set aside all of your assumptions or all of your predictions or all of your presumptions about other people or about circumstances in order to bring yourself clarity of mind. Of course, the moon card is also about your emotions. So the moon card could also be telling you that your obstacle or your blockage or your challenge lies within your feelings, that there is an old emotional wound or some old pain that needs to be dealt with. And if that is the case, then this is also going to be a card where you should pay attention to the cards that come up in conjunction with it. The nearby cards are going to have the messages concerning where to look within your emotions or what can be worked on from an emotional aspect. The Five of Pentacles. The Five of Pentacles is a card of poor me. The Five of Pentacles is a card where we get stuck in a mindset that we are on the outside. We look around at other people 
and their lives and we assume that they have things that we don't have and that we'll never get to have those things. It's a card of scarcity in that way, a card of lack. It's coming from a place of scarcity and lack. It assumes that because other people have things and we don't, that we'll always be on the outside or that we're supposed to be on the outside, that it's our faith our fate not to have those things or that we're destined to not have those things or that we're being punished and it's very much a reminder that that is a poor me kind of attitude and that we need to change that thinking we not not only need to change that thinking but also need to take steps in order to change that situation in our lives so the five of pentacles can very much be telling us that it's time to go ahead and take some steps take some actions that allow us a larger sense of belonging that allow us a togetherness and allow us to feel like we're on the inside of some things that we're not currently involved in. So it's very much about changing our mindset, but also changing our patterns in life. And it's a reminder that it's often our own ideas or our own perceptions that keep us on the outside of things. The judgment card. Judgment asks you to learn from your past mistakes, your past lessons, your past experiences. It asks you to reflect upon the past before moving forward. It says you won't be able to move forward constructively or positively until you've come to terms with what you were already supposed to learn. The problem is we often have trouble coming to terms with our lessons without being too judgmental, without being too harsh on ourselves. So the judgment card could be telling you, you're being too hard on yourself, you're being too harsh, you need to take a step back and be objective about the, the hard knocks you've received or the difficult challenges you've faced or the lessons that you've learned. And it's also saying you need to face those things objectively and honestly and from a clear perspective if you truly want to move forward in a direction that is good for you. Death. The death card will tell you that there are things that you need to leave in the past. So the death card may be telling you that not only is this about your perceptions, your mindset, your emotions, right? Those are the kind of the tenets of shadow work. That's where our shadow lies and where our shadow manifests. But the death card is also telling us it has to do with our actions that we're going to have to leave some actual things behind or change our behaviors or change our lifestyle, change some of the things that we do if we want to make the kind of progress and have the kind of growth that we are seeking. We need to be comfortable with letting go of some things in order to make room for that progress, for those blessings that we are seeking in our lives the nine of cups in shadow work the nine of cups may very well be telling you that you are too stuck in your comfort zone that it is time for you to push yourself a little bit further that you're holding yourself back because you assume that comfort means that you are safe you assume that staying secure is the best way to keep yourself well or healthy or happy and the nine of cups say, is saying that's not so the only way that you're going to gain deeper connection or fulfillment or meaning is by getting out of that cocoon the nine of cups can very much be about a deep-seated need for security and stability and protection that is actually keeping you far too insulated and actually preventing you from the growth or from the blessings or from the changes that you really need in order to be a whole integrated happy or healthy person and then we are going to go with the lovers card 
The Lovers card is very much symbolic of shadow work because the Lovers card is all about integration, integrating the two halves into the whole. The Lovers card reminds us that there are times when we have become convinced, either consciously or subconsciously, by ourselves or by others, by the world around us, or by our own perceptions, that we have to ignore or give up on one part of ourselves in order to pursue another part of ourselves. And the lover's card says, this is not so. What would be best for you is to find a middle way where you can honor all aspects of yourself, where you don't have to leave anything behind. So if the lover's card comes up in terms of shadow work, then it's going to be pointing towards a side of yourself that has been left in the shadow, a side of yourself that has been neglected or left behind or ignored or forced underneath the surface. And the lover's card is going to be telling you that you need to integrate that part of yourself in order to become a whole, in order to become integrated yourself in order to become self-sovereign, in order to gain the fulfillment and the satisfaction that you are seeking. It's going to ask you to look for the hidden and forgotten parts of yourself, the parts that are not expressed, the parts that are not explored, the parts of your personality that you're not allowing yourself to show to the world, the parts of yourself that you're not sharing with anybody, the parts of yourself that you are trying to let die, the parts of yourself that need expression and are not getting in attention and are becoming withered and sad and alone. That is what the lover's card is about in shadow work. And that is what shadow work is about. Stay tuned for part two. I've got some more cards that I'm going to talk about in terms of shadow work. Thanks for watching. Like the video, share it with your friends, comment below, stay blessed.